Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering two questions about internal resistance. The first shows how we can calculate EMF and internal resistance from a graph, and the second involves using and manipulating the equation in the relationship sheet. Here's the first question from the 2013 revised higher paper. I'll just be answering part A. A thermocouple is a device that produces an EMF when heated. A technician uses the circuit shown to investigate the operation of a thermocouple when heated in a flame. Readings of current and potential difference PD are recorded for different settings of the variable resistor RV. The graph of PD against current is shown, and here we have that graph. We're then asked to use information from the graph to find 1. the EMF produced by the thermocouple and 2. the internal resistance of the thermocouple. So, what's happened in the circuit is that the resistance of the variable resistor has been decreased, causing the current in the circuit to increase. As current increases, the PD across the thermocouple, what's called the TPD, or terminal potential difference, decreases. To find the EMF of the thermocouple, all we have to do is continue our line back to where it intercepts the y-axis. So the EMF produced by the thermocouple is 0.22 volts. Just remember a ruler for your exam in case you have to do this. To find internal resistance from a graph of potential difference against current, we need to calculate the gradient. First pick two points in the line. The first point has an x value of 0.5, that's the current at that point, and a y value of 0.2, which is potential difference. The second point has an x value of 3 and a y value of 0.1. Calculating the gradient of the line will give a value for negative small r, where small r is the internal resistance in ohms. We'll then use the x and y values of our two points in the line and substitute them into this equation. So gradient equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is 0.1 minus 0.2 divided by 3 minus 0.5, which gives us negative 0.04. This means that internal resistance is equal to 0.04 ohms. Now in this question, we're finding the EMF and internal resistance of a thermocouple, but the same method can be used to find the EMF and internal resistance of a cell or variable power supply. I'll show you another way to answer part two of the question, which uses an equation from the relationship sheet. Here we only need to select one point in the graph. It can be any one of the six points shown, as they're all in the best fit line. Here's the equation. E is equal to V plus I small r, where E is the EMF, that's the energy given to each coulomb of charge that passes through the supply. V is the TPD, that's terminal potential difference, which is the potential difference across the terminals of the supply, and I small r is what's called the lost volts, equal to the current I multiplied by the internal resistance small r. Remember that we found that the EMF was 0.22 volts in part 1. For the point we've selected, we have a current value of 0.5 amps and a TPD of 0.2 volts. Substituting these values into our equation gives us this. 0.22 is equal to 0.2 plus 0.5 r. Subtracting 0.2 from both sides, we get 0.5 r is equal to 0.22 minus 0.2. We can then make internal resistance, small r, the subject of the equation by dividing both sides by 0.5. This gives us an answer of 0.04 ohms again. Remember that this method works with any point as long as it's on the best fit line. Now we'll look at our second question, which comes from the 2012 revised higher paper. This time though, we'll answer the whole question. A student carries out two experiments using different power supplies connected to a lamp of resistance 6 ohms. In the first experiment, the lamp is connected to a power supply of EMF 12 volts and internal resistance 2 ohms is shown. We're then asked to calculate 1. the reading on the ammeter, 2. the lost volts, and 3. the output power of the lamp. So here's the equation we saw earlier. It's important to remember that it's the one equation in the relationship sheet that relates only to internal resistance. If we're to answer this question then, we need to be able to manipulate the equation. Written like this, V is the TPD, terminal potential difference, which would be the voltage across the lamp. The TPD can be calculated by multiplying the current I by the load resistance big R. That's the resistance of the external circuit, in this case, the resistance of the lamp. This gives us a slightly different equation. In summary, E is the EMF of the power supply, 
the energy given to each coulomb of charge that passes through the supply, I is the reading on the ammeter, what we're trying to find. Big R is the resistance of the external circuit, known as the load resistance. Here it's the resistance of the lamp. And small r is the internal resistance of the power supply. Anyway, to find current, we can rearrange the equation further like so, giving us E is equal to I R plus R. Finally, we divide both sides by the term in brackets. We get current I is equal to E divided by R plus R. Substituting into our equation, we get 12 divided by 6 plus 2, which equals 1.5 amps. Part 2 of the question is more straightforward. Remember that we saw before that the lost volts can be calculated by multiplying the current I by the internal resistance, small r. So lost volts equals 1.5 times 2 is equal to 3 volts. Finally, to find the output power of the lamp, we can use this equation. P is equal to I squared R, where I is the current in the lamp and R is the resistance of the lamp. This gives us 1.5 squared times 6, which is equal to 13.5 watts. Note that the data in the question, the resistance of the lamp, the internal resistance of the power supply and its EMF are written to two significant figures. We can then write our final answer to two significant figures also, giving us an output power of 14 watts. Here's the final part of the question. In the second experiment, the lamp is connected to a different power supply. This supply has the same EMF as the supply in part A, but a different value of internal resistance. The output power of the lamp is now greater. Assuming the resistance of the lamp has not changed, is the internal resistance of the new power supply less than, equal to, or greater than the internal resistance of the original supply? Justify your answer. Let's remind ourselves of the circuit in part A first. The only change is that we don't know the internal resistance of the new power supply. Here's the equation we used to calculate the power of the lamp earlier. We're told in this part of the question that the output power of the lamp is now greater, although we're also told to assume that the lamp's resistance hasn't changed. It must be then that the current in the circuit has increased in order for the lamp's output power to increase. Now here's the equation we used before to calculate the current in the circuit. We said that current is increased and the lamp's resistance is constant. We're also told that the new power supply has the same EMF as the one in part A. So for current to increase, resulting in a greater output power of the lamp, you should see that the internal resistance of the supply is lower than the one in part A. Here's what we can write for our answer. The current in the circuit has increased, meaning that the total resistance of the circuit has decreased. Since the lamp's resistance is constant, the internal resistance must have decreased. This part of the question is a little bit trickier, so you may want to replay it at some point. If you've been trying to answer the question yourself while watching the video, you'll maybe realise that there are several ways of answering each part. I've tried to simplify the video by showing what I consider to be the most straightforward method each time. And that, I'm afraid, is the end of the video. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.